<laughs> All right, lots of fun and just a few more modules to discuss here. What I am attempting on this one is just to talk about the last few blocks I haven't discussed in the 1.1 update. Four mods, new step sequencer, rounds LFO, a synced LFO, thank you, and the bento box crossfade. Um, let's start with the crossfade. Basically, you can send it two inputs, whatever you want. Audio sources, modulation sources, whatever. And then it comes out into whatever you want. And then you blend between the two sources. So in this case, as, again, I'm doing very simple stripped down examples, but you can hear, personally, I think it's a really powerful, even just a simple, tiny little, uh, what this is, just a few modules, and look what kind of sounds you can get out of it. So I've mapped the crossfader to a knob, and it's basically deciding to enable the modulation from two different synced LFOs, one running at quarter note, one at three sixteenths, different directions, different wave shapes, and these are basically sent out to modulate the filter, this uh, SVF I have here at the end. So you can hear the effect. <laughs> So right off the bat, you can you can get very interesting modulation changes. Uh, you, you could do this before with a mix of the control voltage processor, but this is much easier. So next thing to notice, again, these are synced LFOs. The rounds LFO is a welcome addition. You can choose between free, so it's more like the bento box LFO, or you can just basically choose gate or host and then lock it to a specific note value. Um, very necessary. Right off the bat, you heard, uh, actually you saw people building uh, modded versions in the user library of the bento LFO because it needs a sync feature Okay, and then lastly I have the four mods. This is so cool. This is um, I, I look at it like a more configurable LFO something an LFO you can manipulate to do what you want. There's four channels eight steps So you can use this like a step sequencer In fact, if you attach it to the quantizer, you could have it playing specific values um kind of like a massive stepper, you know, in a way like that. Except more powerful, I think, because you can change up some movement on it. Why is this doing this? Come on now. Anywho. What you can do out is, is send it a gate, obviously. Again, we're not even using note information. The, the DWG, which is capable of so many different sounds, as you can hear here, just by turning a few knobs, is just playing one set frequency. That's it. And then what we're doing is sending a gate, 16th notes, and then out of the different channels, one, the main line I'm running into the LPG to get that modulated kind of effect. That's where the sequence comes from by just opening and closing the low pass gate. Um, and then another, number two here, two and three are running into the modulation. So I'm doing a little bit of uh, wave shaping modulation and then also a little bit of FM uh, modulation amount just to create different variations and what's cool is you can just select all these different tracks and blend them and tweak them turn them on or off glide them with these knobs turn the gate on or off message um, use it bilateral unilateral whatever you need and then you saw where I'm I'm adjusting the steps and the offset and every time you do that you're gonna get like a rhythmic variation that quite honestly you would have never played in your thought to like uh, thought to sequence it's just going to, you're just going to listen to it and react to it. So one of the things I love about the four mods is that think about it when you're, you know, we don't want our, our bass lines or our, any line for that matter to get too loopy and long and you want some variations. This is one of the easiest ways you can do it by just automating a simple parameter, adjust the offset for like a breakdown, you know, like a turnaround before a chorus or something or whatever you can imagine. Super helpful. So Again, I think I wanted to show off this because it's a very stripped down, basic um, configuration of blocks, and yet you can get so many different sounds out of it. I've just been jamming on it for a while. Um, one thing I've found myself doing now is actually, since I'm in machine, uh, and this one had some effects on top of it, by the way, um, but when I'm in machine, I find myself now just duplicating these ensembles because I change a little bit and I can't get back to where I was before. So now I have like a duplicate version on this track. I find it very helpful um, in case you've gone too far. That's the beauty of modular, you know, like 
You better capture it that one time, otherwise it's gone. Um, so this can be helpful to get back to a starting point. And on that same note, please remember, I've been burnt this whole tutorial series. I come up with something cool, and I never forget, I never remember to save it. So always be saving your ensembles. You do a little changes, save it as a new one. You can go back and, and organize these later, but you're going to you're gonna hate yourself if you keep uh, deleting something that was cool and, and never getting it. And that's the other beauty about recording inside a machine. You know, if I get something I like, I'll easily just come to a new group and uh, start sampling it and just resample the internal audio and uh, use it as a loop to go on later. So... Hope that's helpful. Enjoy it. Experiment as always. Uh, I find everything incredibly useful. What a great free update. And I hope you enjoy these tutorials. Thank you for watching.